Okay, um, so let's uh, attempt to do this problem. It says pyridoxal phosphate, a close relative of bi vitamin B6, is involved in a large number of metabolic reactions. Tell the hybridization and predict the bond angles for each non-terminal atom. Okay, so in order to um, figure out what the hybridization is, uh, you're going to have to figure out, well, how many electron groups does each one of these atoms have around it, okay? So, um, if you are good at that, then uh, the hybridization and the bond angle come directly from that information, okay? So, non-terminal, um, why don't we go ahead and expand, like, this portion, this portion of the structure, put our lone pairs on there as well, because that really helps, okay? So I'm going to expand this and say this is a methyl group. So we can really see our terminal relative to our non-terminal atom. Okay. And then remember here, this is a CH2, a methylene, CH2 with two hydrogens on it. Okay, do we need to expand that part portion of the structure too? Should we do it? Okay. So we can do that. And then recall, each of these is a carbon too, here, in this ring, okay, the aromatic ring. And each one of those carbons has one substituent off on it, okay? So here, that substituent is what we call a methyl group, a hydroxyl group, right, um, aldehyde, okay, this big R group. And then this one, you see, it doesn't have anything there, but it's got one, two, three bonds to it, so it must have a hydrogen there, okay? So let's just identify that, just to make sure, because what this is what, chapter one still, right? So we're, we're kind of learning how to do this stuff. Okay, so um, is it okay that I don't put the C's within there? Is that fine? Okay, wonderful. So the next thing we'll do is go ahead and put our lone pairs on everything. Okay, do you already have it written on there? No. Oh, okay, so let's, do you want to do it together? Yes. Okay, so remember, um, if your carbons are fully saturated with um, bonds, you know, so like if we look at this carbon, it's got four bonds on it. This carbon has got one, two, three, four bonds, okay? So that's not going to have any lone pairs, okay? So if I look at all of my carbons there, they all have four bonds on them. Okay, so really what we're looking at now is the heteroatoms to see do they have lone pairs or not, okay? So can you help me out? Does, does, should nitrogen here have a lone pair? Yeah, how many? Two. Well, one pair of electrons, right? Yeah, so two electrons. Okay, so we call that one lone pair, okay? So what about this oxygen here? Two lone pairs. Two lone pairs, very good, yeah. Okay, and I know it said the, all the non-terminals, but let's go ahead and look at, this would be kind of a terminal oxygen, you know, but let's look how many, so two lone pairs again. And again, I'm trying to draw them in such a way as to show the directionality of these lone pairs, so really kind of, hopefully will help you out at least down the road when you really start to understand this stuff. Okay, so I don't see any more heteroatoms until I get to here, right? Does that have any lone pairs on it? Two as well. This one up here? Uh, it needs two. Two, very good. What about this oxygen here? It gives you a clue with that negative charge. It's given one away, so it should only have... So it should have five electrons. Well, it's gaining I'm sorry. one. If so it's such a three lone pairs. Three lone pairs, yeah, very good. So, were you doing the formal charge equation backwards in your head? Yes. Okay, <laughs> wonderful. Yeah, that's good. Okay, and then, and then this also one? Three lone also pairs. three lone pairs. Right? And what about the phosphorus? Can you do that one? It's kind of one of those, remember, the weird atoms that expand their valence? Should I, should I give you a clue? Okay. This, if you look, phosphorus has five valence electrons. You can see they're all 
uh, being used to bond there, uh -huh. so it's not going to have a charge, okay? Remember, 5 minus 0 minus 1 half of 10 is going to be 5 minus 5, so that's going to be 0, okay? If you want to go through that slower, um, just watch the video again, okay? So, is, are we cool with the electron? Yes. Okay, wonderful. So now what we want to do is look for um, the electronic structure around each of these atoms, okay? Um, so uh, what you'll find is the amount of electron groups kind of tells you what the bond angle is, and from that bond angle you can get the hybridization, okay? So um, let's just start here, because it wants us to do all non-terminals, okay? So we'll start here. How many electron groups does that carbon have around it? Do you remember what we considered electron groups? Yeah, so single bonds was one, double bonds was just one electron group, triple bonds was just one electron group, and lone pairs, one electron group, okay? So this has four single bonds around it, so how many electron groups? Four, right? So with things with four electron groups, what shape do they become? Tetrahedral. Tetrahedral, okay. So it's 109.5. Yeah, 109.5. So we've really skipped over the hybridization part. So once we say tetrahedral, once we say that electron groups, there's four of them, that's sp3 already, okay? sp3. And what was the other thing I wanted? The bond angle, right? Okay, so. Something with four sigma bonds is going to be what? 1095. 1095, yeah. Okay, so let's go to this carbon here. Okay. Okay, so how many electron groups does it have around it? Four as well. So what did we say? Single bonds count oh, as sorry. one, double bonds count as one. Triple bonds count as one, and lone pairs count as one. Okay, so it's got three. three. Okay, so if it's got three, that approximates uh, what what bond angle? Well, just the angle number. Oh, oh, an angle is one twenty. One twenty, right? So that's going to be um, a trigonal planar. Trigonal planar. Trigonal, right? Because there's three of them. Okay, so it's nothing crazy. You want to re remember three trigonal. Okay, that that really goes together very nicely. Okay, so if we've got three groups, right? So this one had four, right? The bond angle here was 120. What did we say that um, hybridization is? Sp2. Sp2 always. Okay. Like that. Okay? So let's look at this one here. Okay. Is there anything similar for between that one and that one? It looks the same. It's the exact okay. same. So do we need to go through the analysis no, of that one? No. Okay, I'm just gonna write the same thing down. Okay, so in fact I'm just gonna write a little arrow there. Okay, because that one's also SP2 and uh, 120 degree bond angle. Okay? What about this one here? As well. It's the same SP2 thing, actually. right? Same thing. So let's put another arrow there. What about this one there? Up at the top. Um, it's an SP2. SP2, right? Double so bond. same thing. And what about this one over here on the edge? This thing. Same. Thing. Okay. So now let's look at that nitrogen that's on that ring. How many electron groups does the nitrogen have around it? It's three as well. Three as well. So what do you think the hybridization is going to be? So that's an sp2. Sp2 as well. And so um, here, when we're talking about bond angle, right, we're going to talk about the angle between here and here because this is not a bond, okay? Um, because uh, it's got a lone pair, um, Oftentimes we'll think, well, it's going to um, crowd those two bonds in a little bit. But when, it, when you're in one of these aromatic rings, it really doesn't deform the shape as much, you know? So we're going to say this is 120 as well, okay? If this were a non, an atom in a non-cyclic structure, an acyclic structure, or I guess 
more so if that structure weren't aromatic where they had alternating sing double and single bonds, then it would deform the bond angle and it would kind of collapse it a little bit, okay? Like we've talked about before in class, okay? So we're gonna put, is that all right? right. Just a little arrow there. Okay, so let's look at this one here. So how many? It's also got three. Three, so what so is it gonna be? That card is the SP2. SP2. And what's the bond? 120. 120, very good. Um, I know it said only the non-terminal ones. Um, let's look at this one, though. What do you think? How many bond, or how many electron groups are there? So it's got three, three. as well. Three as well. So what's the hybridization? That hybridization is sp2. sp2. We can't name a bond angle, though, because there's no bond to bond. Right? We, when we start at a bond and go to the next bond, it's the same bond, so we can't do a bond angle. But it, yes, it is SP2. Okay, so you can do... Uh, yeah, you don't have to worry. Yeah, that's, uh, don't worry about that. As long as you're trying, that's all I can do. Okay, um, so... Uh, four, uh, four, so that's going to be an SP3. SP3. With 109.5. Um, let's look at this one over here, this oxygen over here. How many uh, electron groups are around? It has four. Four. So what's the hybridization? SP3. SP3. What's the bond angle of this one, though? Okay, wonderful. I'm going to kill it. 